Hello everyone, welcome to the Engineering Projects YouTube channel. My name is Junaid Shahid and in this video I am going to explain you about how you can use Entity Framework Database First Approach in ASP.NET Core application. In the previous video we have used Code First Approach with Entity Framework 2.1 and now we are going to use the second approach uh, which is used whenever you have existing database and you want to migrate uh, the framework, front-end framework or back-end framework. Uh, like we are working on WordPress to ASP.NET Core migration so this video is really important for that migration tutorial uh, because uh, when you have existing application you have existing MySQL uh, database uh, for WordPress and you have to integrate that uh, existing database into SQL server and from the SQL server we will work upon the application framework uh, with the help of ASP.NET Core. So let's see, uh, I will show you in my laptop. Here you have see, uh, I have existing database, blogging database. Uh, here I have two uh, table, blog table and post table. And uh, here I have uh, existing application ASP.NET Core. Okay, so now it's time to uh, install Entity Framework Core. So Either you can perform it uh, from the package manager console or right click here and go to NuGet package manager here and install entity framework core for this project. Go to browse and search for entity core SQL server. Here it is. Uh, here we have to search mysql okay microsoft entity framework sql server okay down that and it will install in your application uh, you can install different versions like i am working on sql server so i have installed it uh, according to this okay uh, remember that we are using 2.1 so uh, always install according to your compatible version of .NET Core. Accept this so it will install. Right after installation, it's time to work on reverse engineering your model. So we need to create entity framework model based on existing database. So what we will do actually, we will go into package manager console and here we will run a simple command which will scaffold db context we will let it know what is the server we will let it know what we want to do okay so here you have to write command scaffold db context and now we need to define SQL stream server which is name of our server so copy this name and paste that in package manager console remember that there are three things which are really important in your SQL connection your database uh, server name your database name and the credential so here you can see I have written the that server name so now it's time to uh, enter the name of database right after this you have to use semicolon and write database and name that which is my existing database blogging and name that here now use the credential we are using the windows credential so i will use trusted underscore connection which is true okay right after this i have to uh, define that what uh, library i am using so i am using uh, microsoft this one okay uh, I have write it Microsoft dot entity frame.
framework dot SQL server output directory output dir and we have to write where to output the data so we have to output the data in models folder and hit enter so let's see what's happened uh, it is it's starting scape folding and using okay if you receive an error stating that the dumb scaffold uh, db context uh, is not uh, recognized at the time of cmd let then close and reopen visual studio or you can rebuild your whole application okay uh, the reverse engineering process create entity classes as blog dot cs post dot cs and uh, a drive context blogging context uh, created so here you can see uh, we have created blogging context and here you can see blog.cs post.cs these names are created based upon the name of our table so uh, the name of table is blog so it's created the model as blog.cs you can view that uh, it is automatically detect uh, what is the return type what is the default value what is the primary key and so on from your existing database okay uh, right after the entry classes are created that representing the data you will query and saving uh, Here are the blog and post entity classes. Here is the blog and here is the uh, post entity classes uh, same as a uh, Blogging context. Okay. Now it's time to register your context with dependency injection the concept of dependency injection is central to ASP.NET Core services such as blocking context are registered uh, with dependency injection during application startup. Components that require these services such as MVC controller are then provide these services uh, via constructor parameter or properties. Okay, uh, so make blocking context available to MVC controller and register it as service so open startup.cs file okay now here you have to go down and right after this services where this so this whole string uh, <clears throat> is available here now uh, in real application you would typically put the connection string in can uh, configuration file or environment variable for the sake of simplicity uh, this tutorial uh, has defined it in code so now it's time to create uh, the controllers and view so what we will do let me add at the red sign here first okay right click on controller and create uh, your controller then actions then views okay So here we have right click on the controller and we are going to create uh, MVC views with entity framework and we will use model class for post and data context is this and here is the post controller add and it will automatically generate the views uh, and the crude operations based upon your entity classes. So what is the actually crux in this video? You need existing database and then you will add that uh, in your application Then you will perform a simple query to create the um, entities entity models uh, for your application and the rest of the things are same as code first approach you just need to create uh, entity models and your base classes from your existing database here you can see uh, it is now done now you can create data now you can post data let me execute this so here you can see our application is successfully executed and here is block table we can add edit delete uh, the data here and here is we have 
post table uh, let's add our data this is content 1 title 1 create and the data is successfully created in this project so we have successfully integrated entity framework database first approach with the help of existing database we created entity models and then the rest of the procedure is same uh, from the entity models we have created controller action views perform the code operations in the uh, data access layer uh, we have created uh, the SQL connection string uh, and set up that into the startup.cs file and now here you can see we have successfully completed the whole life cycle of database first application so now onward you can create any application from the existing database with the help of entity framework it will create uh, your entity models, uh, your views, your code operations automatically in a couple of minutes. So you don't need to waste upon a time on a lot of development from the scratch again. Uh, in the next video, what we will do, we will create a sample WordPress uh, website and then migrate their existing database into our application and onward we will work on the front end side of our application i hope this is informative if you have any kind of question regarding this you can ask us and don't forget to subscribe the engineering project youtube channel take care bye bye have fun